Hi, today we're going to work on a project that hopefully will be fun and informative. And um, you you're going to learn about macros and how to use macros. You might be intimidated by the word macro. It might sound like a string of computer code that you might have to know. It is a string of computer code, but you don't have to know it. You just have to record it. And so let's learn how to use macros for this project which is similar to a project I worked on earlier this week which gave me the idea for this video um, I had to design tickets for a customer of mine with consecutive numbers on them so I did and this is the way I did it if you visualize this page this is eight tickets each one, uh, the solid lines are trims, and the perforation lines are these dotted lines here. So each ticket will have a number and a big half and a little half, so you can tear it apart. And each ticket has the same number on both sides. Now, let's say I had to do a hundred of these or more. You can imagine that would be very time consuming, but if you use a macro, you can do it almost immediately once you record the macro. So what is a macro and how are we going to use it in this case? For the video, I'm just going to do 32 tickets, but you'll be able to see how you can do many more if you do need to. So this is all grouped together, so I'm going to copy it. Then I'll make a new page just by hitting page down. I'm going to make three new pages because each page has eight tickets. We're going to do 32, so I'm going to add three pages. Okay, you can see down at the bottom I have three pages now. And only page one has the tickets. Remember, I copied this to my clipboard, so I can paste it on the page two. Then I hit page down, paste it on a page three, and paste it on a page four. Okay. We're back to page one, and each page is the same. Now, if you could imagine, 32 times 2 is 64 numbers you would have to put here and here, here and here. And we don't want to do that, so we're going to use a macro. And let's. Um, record a macro as soon as we get our numbers I'm jumping the gun here to do the numbers let's go here to Excel this is actually LibreOffice um, but it makes it easy to do consecutive numbering see I want it to be 101 for the first ticket number and all you have to do in Excel is drag this down and make as many consecutive numbers as you want um, I only want 132 for my last ticket number. So 101 to 132, and I'm going to reverse the order here. And I'll tell you why I'm doing all this in a minute. Data, sort, descending. You probably already know how to do this. Okay, 132 to 101. I'm going to do one more thing here, copy that, and move it in a notepad. The only reason I do that is to get rid of any formatting or whatever. This is plain text, and CorelDRAW likes plain text. So, copy it out of Notepad. We'll go back to Draw, and let's get started here. Paste it, and it's going to be paragraph text, which is my default. I'll, control, I'll hit Control and F8, which converts it to artistic text. You can also do that under this text here. Um, I also want it to be a different font. Let's go Clarendon Black. And these should be much bigger. Can't make them too big or you won't be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, let's see what I'll do here. I'm going to decrease the leading so that I can keep it all on the page. So you can see. 
And now I'll make it bigger even than this. There, that's good enough. Um, so now we will turn our numbers red, just because we want to. And then we're going to go up here, uh, arrange, break artistic text apart. And then I'm going to go one more step and convert to curves. If you're printing these yourself, you probably don't have to do this, but if you're sending this to a printer, you really want to convert it to curves because if the printer doesn't have this font, he's going to think something's wrong and he may or may not be able to figure out how to print it properly and you're better off using curves. All right, now it's time to record our macro. Get everything on the screen here. I'm going to start by selecting all these numbers. 101 through 108, that's going to be for page 1. And now let's record a macro. We'll go up here to Tools, Visual Basic, which this is an old version of CorelDRAW. If you have a newer one, this might be called Macro Manager. But either way, it'll do the same thing. Record. Uh, just so I can remember where it is, I'm going to put in global macros, and I'm going to call it number, numbers, tickets. And if I want, I can put a description, but I already know what it does. Oops. I guess I can't call it that. Numbers, tickets, without a hyphen. Okay. Now, it is recording everything I do from this point until I tell it to stop. So remember, I've got these eight selected. I'm going to hit my P key, and that puts them all in the center of the page, one on top of the other. And the reason I reversed the order is because now 101 should be on the top. Remember, it's remembering everything I do. 102, 103. 104. Now the reason I put them in the center to begin is it gives the macro a starting point. Um, from here it remembers each step where each number is being moved from here to here or to here or to here in order. So it's remembering everything I do here. And now we have eight ticket numbers. We're not finished because each other half of the ticket needs the same number as the big half. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. Now you might be wondering, why don't I just select all the numbers at once and do this whole step in one time? Reason is a macro doesn't really like it when you get too complicated, it, at least in the older versions. It likes it when you do one thing at a time, so it can remember that as a series of code, which once again, you don't have to understand the code, you just have to... Okay, so I copied the 101, pasted it, copied 102, pasted... I'll put this on pause so you don't have to watch me do it five more times. And that's everything I want the macro to do. Eight tickets with the same number on each half of the ticket. Five, six, seven, eight. So I'm finished with the macro. Back up here. Visual Basic, Macro Manager. Stop. Okay, remember we called it ticket numbers without a hyphen. I just learned that you can't do that. So let's test our macro. We're going to hit page down. That'll take us to... Um, Page 2, you can see down here what page we're on. There's no numbers on here, so this page will be 109, uh, 10, 11, 12, 30, more, uh, 16. Yes, sorry, that was an art major. Um, so, now that we've done all of that, remember I told you you're only going to have to do all of that once, because that's the beauty of a macro. Let's see if our macro will work again. I think it will. Visual Basic. Play. Okay. Go down here. 
where we put it Glo global macros remember this number tickets i forget forgot what i called it but that's what it was and if i hit run let's watch this magical sequence of events here all right so what just happened i picked eight numbers hit the macro and what did it do it put all eight numbers in the center remember that way it has a starting point and from there it put this one here this one here this one here this one here then it copied this and put it here copied this and put it here one after another and it does it in one second as you just saw so now we have our macro and i'm going to do one more thing because you probably don't want to go to your menu all the time let's go up here to options macros okay remember this numbers numbers tickets this is the one we like and let's give it a shortcut key by going here shortcut keys and i'm going to use control and my number pad five for my shortcut assign and there we go so now i don't have to go up to my menu every five seconds i just hit my shortcut so page down will take me to another blank this is page three 78 9, 20, 24 there's my next eight numbers now i don't have to do anything but hit control five and watch it go all right i have eight more left hit page down select my final eight control five is my shortcut and now I have all my tickets consecutively numbered. If you, sorry about that. Um, if you need to, you can make, keep going past my pages. Um, if you want to, you can make 100. You can make 500. It won't take long if you just use copy, paste, and your macro. And um, if you're sending this to a printer, I would recommend you save it as a PDF document. That way he will receive it, he or she will receive it with as many pages as you've created. And when he prints it out, it should come out exactly the way you sent it to him. Because these are all curves, there's no fonts in here. So that's one use for a macro, and this shows you how easy it is to create one and how you might use it every day or every project that you have that requires a series of repetitive tasks. You can only do it once, and then the macro will do it for you each time. So you might want to try this same uh, project or something similar to it so that you can record your own macros to become familiar with where they are, where, they, where you put them, where, how you make a shortcut. And um, we're done with our project today. So keep, uh, keep trying new things. Keep learning new things every day. I know I do. And I hope your next project goes well.